Hey everybody, welcome <laughs> to the YouTube channel. With me, I got Evan. Uh, that's me. Hatcher. That's me. Uh, yep. Do you like that name. little intro? I did actually. That was I. You kind of caught me off guard. So absolutely. And we're recording this today on your birthday. That's me. That's how, my birthday. How old are you turning today? Uh, Seventeen. Fifty. Okay. Uh, we both went. <laughs> we, we went the twenty-five today. Twenty-five years old. I'm. What of a century? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't like to think about it like that, but yeah, yeah. I'm half my mom's age today. There we go. It's super weird. <laughs> I won't tell you you said that. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so a lot on the channel, we talk about youth ministry and all that stuff. So you grew up in going, uh, you, you grew up, I don't know if you went to church or not. You could probably answer that, but around the age of 16, uh, yeah, you yeah. started going to new Venice church, which is the church that my parents started Yeah, and tell them real quick, like in 20 seconds, the story about Bob's when we were our church. Was, <laughs> so just to give everyone context, our church was meeting in a movie theater at the time. It was a new church. Yeah. Can you just tell this story? It's so funny to me. Talking about the first time we went. The, uh, not the first time we went. The you were working at Bob's, and oh. once, and you really right, wanted yeah. to go to church. <laughs> yeah. And so, so what'd you do? Um. So uh, I had a, I had a job at Bob's Burgers. Um. Which for those that aren't in the Tri Cities, that is a real place. It's a real restaurant. My first job. I think ever. it's Northwest based, right? I think so. It's like Oregon, Washington, Idaho. I think so. Um. And uh. So so I met Austin. Um during the summer. And this was probably around right, right before my junior year in high school, which was 2010. Yep. yep. My sophomore um, year, right before my sophomore year. <laughs> and so I really wanted to hang out with him and his family, um, and go to lunch after church, yeah. uh, after the movie theater. And mm -hmm. so I called in sick to Bob's cause we were going to go to red Robin, I think. And then yes. red, red Robins was booked up like super long way. <laughs> so we're like, let's go to Bob's. And yeah, so, so we went to Bob's and my manager saw me and, uh, I was fired on the spot. I, I, guys, he literally calls in sick and then shows up to the very restaurant <laughs> and he was like, eh, who cares? That was awesome. But he did. It was it. worth it. Yeah. How was church? I mean, at? Church better have been good. It was. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember it, but I'm sure it was better than working at Bob's. Yeah. <laughs> probably was. Probably was. Uh, what was like the importance of youth ministry for you growing up? I mean, for so many different people, like it's, they they have different experiences. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people go and they feel like they have a family. Some people go and they feel like they're all alone because they don't connect with anybody. Right. But is, <clears throat> is having some type of community like that when someone's in high school, is that like super important? Do you feel like it's just important for some people? I'm, I mean, it definitely helped me. Uh, yeah. So growing up, um, I don't know if I've ever talked about this on your channel. Mm. Um, but growing up, I, uh, um, I wasn't a church goer. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't like it. I, my, once, once a year on Easter, um, my mom would drag us to the Presbyterian church, there we um, go. which I'm not going to name the only one in Kennewick, Washington. Oh but, boy. Um, <laughs> but I mean, of course the Presbyterian, Presbyterian church was the pews and stained glass. And I mean, just old fashioned. Yeah. It yeah. was, it was rough. And so, uh, yeah, when, I mean, I, I met you through, mm -hmm. um, a game of basketball that we're not going to talk about. And, uh, um, I was wet. That's, I mean, that's, that's a way to word that's that. That's one way yeah. to word it. Yeah. Could, yeah, for sure. Um, and then, uh, 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 yeah. So, so I, I joined new vintage church and, and, uh, the community was, uh, extremely helpful because all my friends either went through, you know, once new vintage came, all my, all my friend group either went the church route with new vintage cause it was the new fun, exciting thing that was welcoming to mm -hmm. youth and you didn't have to sit in a pew. Right. Uh, or they went the party route. Right. And so that helped me kind of, whereas I, I definitely veered off multiple times, it kept me more, more towards the church and more of a neutral mm -hmm. as opposed to if, if new vintage wasn't there. And if, if that community wasn't there, yeah. I mean, I, I, I would have just followed. What's interesting too, is like so many people, their experiences with God are obviously oftentimes related to church, Yeah. but our experiences with church often are related to our perceptions of church. So like, you didn't, you didn't love going to church growing up, uh, partially because the experience was kind of old fashioned, outdated, yeah. but also you just didn't go, you didn't go try other churches cause you just had the, your perception was like, why, My perception do, why was, do I need it? Everyone, everyone needs to be quiet. And if you make any noise, you should probably just leave the room. Cause that's, that's what old fashioned church is. It's yeah. you listen, you show up, you listen, you sing hymns that you know nothing about. Hmm. Open the book of uh, Psalms. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, you should probably go on tour with that. Honestly. Oh, uh, 
And here we got, uh, what do we got here? Okay. Just getting used All to right. the sound poor, ladies okay. and gentlemen. Don't yep. judge me. Don't give Austin toys. <laughs> Don't give me a toy. <laughs> That's the lesson here. But yeah. yeah, no, it's it's uh, it was extremely helpful because it um, it it just helped me connect with a group of people that I wanted to be like and with, as yeah. opposed to the people that only hang out after ten p.m. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, friendships and stuff like that play such a big part in everyone's lives. Like in my life, it's played a huge part. In your lives, everyone's lives, friendships play a huge part, and. I like the most common thing I hear about youth ministry, church stuff from parents all the time. And even from students as well, is they're nervous to go because literally, and I know it sounds funny, but they're like, I don't have anybody to sit with. I don't know anybody. Yeah. That, that's actually the reason why a lot of people don't are go to super church. nervous. Yeah. Right. Cause they, they, they have this perception, but they don't have relationships, stuff like that. Well, that's, I mean, that's also even true. Like when I first moved back from Delaware mm. to the tri cities, yeah. He, I, was, he was in the Air Force, by the way, everybody, for six years. I sure was. Thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. Th- yeah. Thank me. Thank me. I, yeah. You are. I, 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 you have been thanked. Um, Bless me. So, you, yeah, anyways, just giving context for it. So, you moved back yeah. after six years. Yeah, so I, I moved back after six years. And, you know, when I left, I, uh, um, I, I was known, at least. Like, people knew me, so I was never, I never felt alone. because you had I, friends. Yeah, I grew up in that community. Now everyone went off to college. Everyone else, you know, met a thousand more people and it's been six years. Yeah. Uh, and so everyone grew tight together. So like my first two months back, it actually, that along with a slew of other things yeah. kept me from being in love with going to church on Sundays and, mm. and the young adult groups on the Tuesdays and Thursdays and stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it's because when I showed up to a place, I knew a lot of people, but they didn't remember me. Right. And so even that kept me and, and I, I kind of went to church for a while at yeah. that point. So, so I mean, community is kind of everything and, yeah. and an, a welcoming community is, is even more. Yeah. Um, it, it goes to show just how important it is to reach out mm-hmm. to the people close to you mm-hmm. as much as it is to reach out to those far from you. Yeah. Like I see people all the time and I've done this probably more times than most people. So I'm not even saying this in a judging way, but I see so many times on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it is, mm-hmm. uh, people are inviting people like, hey, church this Sunday, here's service times. Hope you can make it, Yeah, which is good. And like, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But right. like, you're sharing, you're sharing the message. You're, share, you're sharing some information, whatever. Yeah. But the best, the best way to just get somebody to come and, and enjoy, a, a, you know, a church experience is through relationship, right? Like somebody going, like actually somebody you have a relationship with and inviting mm-hmm. them and telling them and stuff like that. Uh, why is youth group so, I don't know, daunting or uh, hard for somebody to, wh- wh- what do you, what do you, why do you feel like there's so many students and they just, they don't see the value in, uh, in church, but maybe they believe in God. Maybe they, maybe they would say they're a Christian, but they just don't see any value or they don't see enough value in it to go and be a part of it. Um, yeah. Why, why do you think so? Why, why do you think that is uh, just, be, just be, I ask you because I grew up in church my whole life. So church is a normal thing right. for me when I was younger, but that's not the case for everybody. And you've so, never experienced the side of church, not being the popular thing. Right. And I've been to actually church experiences of other religions and denominations and things of that nature. So I got a taste of it, but I'm still used to church, which right. has pros and cons. Right. In some ways. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So why do you, why do you feel like some people are so nervous to go to like, just to be a part of a church or don't see the value in it? Well, I, I think it's, um, so, so there's kind of, there's kind of two different views here. It's the Facebook Christian where it's, it's, I mean, we talked about this when we first, you know, kind of started our friendship Mm -hmm. about wearing, you know, cross jewelry. Mm. I, you and I were kind of on the same page way back when, when we didn't like wearing cross jewelry because everything we do is then amplified just a little bit more because then people associate you with a Christian. Mm. And I mean, I'm not perfect every day. Right. I, I mess up, hang out with me for 10 minutes and you'll find out I'm kind of weird. How about five? Yeah. Less even. <laughs> yeah. One minute. <laughs> oh, he's, you he's just different. look at me and you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's, it, there's the Facebook Christians where it's, it's easy to mark it on a page and then, and then just never worry about it again until someone asks you about it. And they're like, Oh, go reference my Facebook page. Right. Um, but then it's it's also there's also a, a, another turn of it to say the the kids that go to go to youth group yeah. and stand in the back with their arms crossed during the worship uh, mm-hmm. songs and mm-hmm. uh, and then during the message when they're just on their phone texting and stuff it's it's 
it's good that they're there, mm-hmm. but there's a big fear that, and I, I don't know where this fear comes from, honestly. I think people are so afraid to let other people know that they want to know about God, mm. but they're in a building where everyone is like-minded. Everyone there wants to know about God, except or for the one or two people. it seems like that. Even if it, yeah. That might be true sometimes, but yeah. even if it's not, it, seem, it can seem like that. Yeah, but but even though, you know, even the one or two people that are going because their girlfriend or boyfriend is going at that yeah. age, but you know, the, the people that just stand there and with their arms crossed and, and just kind of stay silent. A lot of them are so afraid that other people might judge them for wanting a relationship with God. So they kind of stay silent. Mm. Newsflash, you're in a church, right? Everybody there wants to know about God right. to some degree, yeah. to, to some degree. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's where I've always kind of, um, Cause right, right when I joined new vintage, I was kind of thrown in cause I mean, I went because you went and then I quickly learned that you were speaking at that church. So right. the youth group. And I, well, I used to invite people all the time telling yeah. them like, Hey, you yeah. should come tonight. I'm speaking. Yeah. And people thought, Oh, that's wow. What a, that's a big deal. You know? Yeah. And it was a big deal, but they didn't know that I did that pretty much every week. And yeah. so then they were like, Oh, you're, you speak a lot at this, you know, <laughs> yeah. but I, I pretended like, Hey, I got this special opportunity. And I used I got it a and gig. it worked. Yeah. I got a gig. <laughs> but no, it's, 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 uh, there's, there's just a big, I, I don't know where it stems from. I, maybe you can tell, I and mean, maybe you have some insight on this, but there's just a big disconnect of, oh no, I don't want that girl over there. That's really cute to mm. know that I want to know Jesus. So I'm just going to stand here and look cool. I, I don't, yeah. and cause I never, I never had that problem. You know, once I went to church, I, I went mm-hmm. to church. Right. Right. Cause I, I, I had a big ego, but I didn't have a big ego in a church building, I guess. Mm-hmm. There's probably some false information in that, but, yeah. but I mean, what, why, why do, why are people so afraid to let other people, why, why are young people especially so afraid to let other people know that they want to go further in a, in a church? That's why they're going to youth group in the first place. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's always baffled me. Yeah. Yeah. So why? Why, why do especially young people mm-hmm. go to a youth group or go to a church mm-hmm. and kind of stand there nonchalant, mm-hmm. kind of afraid that other people might think that they're there for God? And, yeah. you know, I don't I, know. I think there's a few reasons. The, the few that come to mind for me is like one is some people just care too much about what other people think. Yeah. Which every single person in the entire world battles in some way. I battle it. You battle it. Everyone watching this video, we all battle with just being, just not caring. Right. And in some ways, I think there's some healthiness of like, you should care what people think. Like you should brush your teeth. If you don't care, you should care about. Some would say that. Yeah, I would. (laughs) I don't. Uh, He doesn't. Um, But also, uh, but like, especially like me amplified in high school too, when they're around so many of their friends and they want to look cool or impressive or whatever. The other thing is too, is like, if they just don't see why they should. And I think there's a few reasons for that. But one is, like, uh, they've just never cracked open a Bible and like read about church and like what it's about. Was well, that even really important? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I, you know, and I think the third one can be, um, mm-hmm. that people are scared, uh, and nervous to just try new things and get out of their comfort zone, mm-hmm. including church. And that's why having like relationships and friendships and stuff like that can be so helpful because it can break down that barrier and stuff. Uh, and just to get, like, give you an example, I, I went to uh, a, a comedy club, uh, when I was 18 and they usually not usually, yeah, they usually don't let minors in. I was 18. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess it wasn't a minor, but people under 21. Yeah. But, because uh, of the alcohol, I'm sure. Because of the alcohol. Yes. But, uh, there was like once a quarter, they allowed uh, people, you know, 18 and above, but you had to wear a spe- special wristband. I was the only one there other than uh, other than my friend that came with me that had the wristband on. And we just felt weird. We were like, we're yeah. just not we, we, like, hey, we're <laughs> young, you know, or whatever. Right. And so I don't know if that like, I think that might be some of the feeling of like just trying out new things and stuff like that. Is it's just out of your comfort zone. You feel like you stand out. And I've heard people say this all the time and it's not true. It's, it's in all of, it's just in people's heads, but people have said things to me like, Oh man, people at church, they judge me or I'm scared to be judged. Let's be honest here for a minute. 99.9999% of people don't know 
your crap. Scientific fact. They just don't. Right. So that people are judging me. Are they judging you? Or was someone just rude? Or I, I feel like a lot of times that can be in our, in, in our own heads. And of course, mm-hmm. churches have to do a good job of like setting a good atmosphere. But I think sometimes people just feel guilty and stuff, whether that's because of the church atmosphere or that's just because maybe they were told growing up how your living's wrong. And so they show up in a church and it reminds them of what their dad told them when they did this. I, I right. don't know. But yeah, they just feel judged whether that's their fault or not their fault. But it's, it can be a hurdle. Just shame. Yeah. In general. Well, uh, I, and, and just to add mm-hmm. to that, uh, um, I, I met this guy named Eric Thomas. I don't know if you ever heard of Eric Thomas. He's world renowned, uh, um, motivational speaker. He's that hip hop preacher, if you will. Okay. Um, I heard him speak at, uh, um, I think it was Langley air force Base back okay. in like, I mean, this was probably five years ago or so. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of right when I first got in and he said something so profound, so obvious, but it was so clarifying. And, mm-hmm. and even today I haven't really grasped it Yeah, you know, five years later, but he said, fear isn't real. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an illusion or an idea of something that may never actually happen. Right. right. And I said, Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so, whereas I've never really been afraid of what people think of me mm. or that's, that's not necessarily true. More so now I'm afraid of what people think of me. Sure. Um, than I, than I was as a kid. Cause mm. I was just kind of naive, but, uh, um, but, the, the fear of, oh no, what is that person thinking about me? Mm-hmm. That's, you're the only one thinking it, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's, it's a fear that isn't, and fear isn't real. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just a, a, a mindset. You're putting together a story in your head. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of strange. So if you're going to make, uh, we've, I think a lot of this video would pertain mostly to, to people who attend a church, but if you're going to say something to, uh, youth pastors mm-hmm. on this channel, and say, hey, this is the biggest thing I've learned, or this has been the biggest benefit for me, or this is th- this is what solidified it for, or whatever it is. What's one thing that you think from uh, a non-youth pastor, non-youth leader's uh, perspective that you would say, this is what I would encourage youth pastors, churches, and youth leaders to make sure they're doing for the benefit of the people who are attending or who are new and yet to attend? Well, I That's mean... That's a big question, but... I- it's a it's a real simple answer, and I'm yeah. The way I'm going to say it is, I'm I'm very fortunate that I became friends with Austin before I ever knew anything about Pastor Austin. Right. You know, so so this is kind of coming from a biased standpoint, mm-hmm. um, and maybe this is more geared towards the speakers and the people mm-hmm. involved in the church. Is I realized you were a real person mm. before I ever realized that you were a church person or a godly person a or speaker. A, a speaker. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and so that, that in turn, when I was, you know, then when I was placed on a stage, mm-hmm. uh, um, especially more so in Delaware, um, mm-hmm. where I was part of, uh, um, United church over there mm-hmm. where it just grew astronomically really fast. Yeah. Um, it's, it's vitally important mm-hmm. to show as a leader that you're a person way before you're ever an executive or anything. It's, yeah. it's, it's the vul or yeah. the vulnerability, the vulnerability yeah. is a lot more important than the position or the message. Yeah. If you're not vulnerable, you're never going to reach the kids that mm. need to be helped or guided mm. or mentored Yeah. because they're never going to say, okay, that guy's a real person. They're going to say, no, that guy stands on a pew and dictates right and wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. it's it's vitally important that people see that we're all real people going through the exact same things, yeah. and nothing's a secret. You know, it just just because I battle and have battled in the past depression right. doesn't mean that you, since you've been on a stage, have never battled depression. Right. And and I, you know, I, I stand on a stage and I play music because it's what I'm, you know, better at than speaking. Right. But. But it's it's I, I've never shied away from the fact that I'm I'm messed up. You mm-hmm. know, I, I have these issues mm-hmm. and I really hope that I can get the kid sitting at home, maybe glancing across YouTube mm-hmm. to come to because he has the same issues. Yeah. And and that's where we can mesh. No, that's good. Uh, I think it was John Maxwell who said um, <sighs> what's more important than correcting somebody is connecting with somebody. You know, what's, what's more important is telling them what's right or wrong is actually building a connection, a bridge there. And I don't know who said this, but I heard this a long time ago and I, 
I share it with our youth leaders at our church all the time that trust is the bridge that carries the weight of truth. And if you want to bring truth to people, um, like you have to build a bridge called trust. And the stronger that that trust is there, the more, the bigger the weight load you can bring to somebody. But that trust isn't built without vulnerability. You don't, you just don't trust. You're I, absolutely right. I just don't trust people until, until you know them, you've seen them vulnerably. Right. Like my, you know, my wife's seen my good, bad, ugly. You've seen, you've seen all the different sides of me. But that builds, that vulnerability builds a sense of trust, which builds uh, an ability to just be honest and truthful with one another. And I just think that's really important, especially for youth pastors, pastors, leaders in church, uh, to make sure that they're building that bridge of trust with people that are attending. Well, think think about it like this, and this is something that just kind of came to you. I've never verbalized this, mm-hmm. and maybe it won't make sense verbalizing mm-hmm. it. When you call... Uh, like when I have a, a problem with my phone, I call Verizon Wireless, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do everything in my power mm-hmm. to get to an agent as fast as possible because I don't like speaking to that automated person. Right. So if someone yeah. isn't automated or yeah. if, if someone isn't vulnerable, mm. they're going to seem like a robot. Yeah. That's Whereas, a really good point. I mean. Yeah. And and so if, if they're vulnerable, mm. you're thinking, okay, I'm talking to a real person and I'm not talking to the speaker on the stage. Yeah, they're kind of like a one size fits all. Yeah, I have the same answer for whatever yeah, yeah. person's in front of me. Wow, and that's a really good analogy, though. We don't want to talk to like yeah. people who seem like robots. We want to talk to people who are actually people. people yeah, and vulnerable, and and they actually experience life the same way that I do. They just are really good at working through it, right? Publicly, at least, right, right, right. Well, Evan, thank you so much for coming on this YouTube channel. This is the first yes. video we've ever done with this setup and uh, many, a nice setup here, man. Yeah, many, many more to come. And if you're wa- if you guys are watching this down below in the comments, wish Evan a happy 25th birthday, everybody. Or don't or, or don't. You don't ha- it's a free country. You don't have to. <laughs> but do it. Do Thanks, it, brother. Yeah. Love you, man.